Hi guys, it's great to see you and welcome to this video. It so happens that a couple of days ago was the second anniversary of me moving to Geneva for good and this was an opportunity for me to look back at my two years here. Today I wanted to talk to you about the 10 things I wish I knew before I moved to Geneva, Switzerland. I hope you enjoy the video. So my second anniversary of living in Geneva caught me a little bit of surprise that time flies so fast that it seems like no time and here we are and two years have passed. This was an opportunity for me to reflect a little bit on you know all the things maybe I would have done differently, all the things I wish I would have known. Obviously it's a completely subjective thing uh, but here it goes, the list of 10 things that I wish I really knew before moving to Geneva. So the first point and this is still before you actually come here if your goal is to move to Geneva but you do not have a job yet, start your job search way in advance. Apparently what most recruiting houses in Switzerland say that the average even when speaking French is roughly six months. Do not get discouraged. If your dream is to come here, if you have a solid background, you will eventually find a job. If you speak French, probably will be a little bit easier, obviously. If you don't, it will be a little bit harder, still possible. But brace yourself for the fact that it might, in fact, take some time, a couple of months, six, seven, a little bit longer than in other places, more than you're used to. Second, let's say you already have a job, you have to arrive in Geneva. Brace yourself for the apartment search. It is a long process and everybody who lives here knows what I'm talking about. It is both long and not very pleasant. There is a very rough competition on the market and competition from the side of people looking for an apartment. You will have to go to multiple viewings, probably prepare a CV, motivation letters, obviously all the usual, so your pay slips and job contracts. There will be probably heavy screening on who you are, why do you want to move. I will also make a separate video about looking for an apartment. When I do, it's gonna be linked here. The Geneva real estate market is quite peculiar. The adverts will often not have good pictures of the apartment, maybe often even just pictures from the outside. The condition of the apartment will really vary. You will mostly be dealing with real estate agencies and they're quite spoiled. They know that regardless Regardless of the state of the apartment, they will rent it at some point. This makes it quite difficult and unpleasant to find an apartment in Geneva. Brace yourself that this might take a while. Obviously, at the end, everybody finds an apartment. I mean, you know, people people have a place to live, but it is a long process. And depending where you come from, this might be a little bit of a surprise uh, for you. Still, before you come to Geneva, make sure you notarize and translate all the documents that you might have. Marriage certificates or being single certificates, certificates of non-pursuit, all kinds of diplomas that you have or statements from your previous employers. All those documents you'll really find useful if you're planning to live here for a longer time. Just make sure when you arrive, just have it translated and notarized. It will be much cheaper regardless where you come from and you already have the paperwork necessary for anything you want to do here. This will really help and simplify a lot of bureaucracy. Fourth, and this might seem a little bit lame and cheap, but that's what a lot of people do before coming here. Fix all your medical and dental stuff before you actually arrive. There is probably nothing, just make a dental checkup. Wherever you come from, it will be multitude times cheaper than in Switzerland. Just make sure you have it fixed before you arrive. So when you come here, you will have a peace of mind for a couple of months or however often you do your checkups and it will be quite a big saving for you. Five, still before coming to Geneva, people often ask, should I buy something before I come here? What are the kind of things that are more expensive here? If you can afford that, meaning you have a moving truck, just buy wherever you're, you feel you're gonna need here because literally everything is multiple times more expensive here. So if you know that you're gonna need this kind of sofa, couch, bed, furniture, just buy it wherever you're from. And if you're moving with a truck, just load it there. Same goes to all kinds of house appliances, clothes. The only thing that you will find that is not much more expensive in Switzerland, or actually it, the prices are quite good, is electronics. So with this, you'll be fine. But for everything else, you know, even uh, furniture in Ikea or clothing in Zara, obviously is much more expensive than the same pieces of furniture or clothing in other countries. Just one more thing. If you are in fact buying stuff like clothes or furniture and bringing them into Switzerland, make sure to get rid of the tags because in fact, everything that you're bringing should be used before, like not as new, because this will complicate stuff with the customs. So just keep in mind that actually you should be bringing stuff that is older, half a year, stuff that you already pre-owned when entering, just FYI. And yeah, so we're halfway there and this is almost everything you need before actually leaving for Geneva. I'll take a moment to make a coffee for myself. <laughs>
and I'm back. My sixth tip, and that's really something I wish I knew, is once you come here, just really focus on the bureaucracy as much as you can. I know you're gonna be very eager to furnish the apartment and everything, but focus on the basics, focus on having the permit done right, focus on the health insurance fixed. As soon as you have this in place, you will be able to focus on everything else. The bureaucracy, especially the, the permit part, is quite painful in Switzerland. It sometimes takes two or three weeks, sometimes it takes four or five months. It really depends on how busy the cantonal authorities are. For example, with my permit, it took roughly, I think, three or four months for me to get it. Then I got the first page, the second page went missing. I had to repost documents. When I was reposting documents, I had to pay a fee for reposting them, even though I wasn't the one who lost the documents. So it can take a really long time. Uh, also, my friends had this issue where the permit was issued with a typo in the name and this went over and over and it took a year to fix. So once you're here, just make sure you fix that properly in the very beginning. And once you have that out of the way, you can really focus on doing everything else. But to have that out of the way is really important. <laughs> Number seven, and I guess it depends on your character, if that's gonna be a problem for you. You will have to obey a lot of rules in Switzerland. For some people it will come more naturally, for some it will be a little bit more difficult, but this is a really a rule-based nation and it's very strict and you will have to get used to that. When you move to a new apartment you will get this little cheat sheet with all this stuff that you can and cannot do, at what time can you take a shower, is shower 10 or 5 okay or is the police gonna come? You will also have to get used to a new way of driving, at least for me, I'm from Eastern Europe, driving is a little bit different there. So you will learn that after a couple of months, because the penalties also for speeding are so high, you will learn to drive 49 and a half in a 50 area and then, you know, the persons who are driving 51 are gonna be, you know, almost like mad people to you. Uh, once again, you know, all the issues with taking a shower after a 10, running laundry, there's an entire list of, you know, things that you can and cannot do after a 10, before 10 on Saturdays or Sundays. So there is quite a lot of rules. It's good if you obey them because it's really kind of frowned upon if you don't and you'll get used to that very quickly and then it'll be fine. Number eight, and that's something that caught me quite by surprise actually in Switzerland. Um, so you moved here, you will need to buy some appliances, oven or a dishwasher or maybe a washing machine because the apartments often come without them. Well, mostly the apartments come without them. So let's say you want to buy them from the internet. What surprised me really in Switzerland is that most often the delivery is to the door downstairs, which means that if you live, I don't know, on the third or fourth floor, it's really your business to, to take the stuff upstairs. And the deliveries are done between, mostly between nine and six. I mean, there are some exceptions where they bring it upstairs, but that's also between nine and six. So either you have to take a half day off to have the stuff delivered. And it was quite shocking to me because I mean, really it would make sense actually to deliver only from 6 p.m. until midnight because that's actually when most people are at home. When I mentioned this to the gentleman who was doing the delivery and fixing it on the phone, he told me that these are the consequences of buying the stuff online. Online shoppers bring business to him and yet this attitude was really horrible and obviously you could only do it in French. If there is not explicitly mentioned that there's an option to, for bringing it upstairs, likely it will be your business to bring it upstairs and scheduling will be rather difficult. Uh, Saturdays are usually out of the option, so you will probably have to take a half day or a couple of hours off to have all the stuff delivered. So maybe try to do it before you still start working if that's an option, point nine, I believe. And don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to shift the plane. This is completely on me, but that's something I wish I knew before I came here. Geneva will be really difficult without French. And I previously, I used to live in the Netherlands without Dutch, it's completely manageable. I live in Rome without Italian, it's not easy, but people are really willing to try to communicate with you. Here, although apparently 60% of the city are expats, obviously you can speak English with them. But if you're trying to fix some kind of bureaucratic stuff in the municipality, let's say governmental offices, or you just need some small fixes like, I know, plumbing, you will find that without French it will be really difficult to communicate. Not only because the other person often will not speak French, but also they will be absolutely unwilling to help you in English whatsoever. So that's a little bit tricky in, in Switzerland, but once again, the, this fault is completely on me in this case. Well, yeah, I'll just have to learn good French. What is important to, to note, and maybe this will sound a little bit naive to some people, but I'm sure that there are some people who will need to hear this. German will not help you in Geneva, like French will not help you much in Zurich. So you're, if you're coming here to the Swiss part, it will really help you to, to speak at least a little bit of French. Number 10, and that's actually a tip I would give an expat in any country. There is a lot of expats in Geneva. Obviously, they will be your, your first friends when you come here, and this will be, you know, the community where, you know, you're all in the same situation, so it will be the easiest to find friends. But I would really encourage you to also try to find some friends who are actually locals. 
because this will completely change your experience or perception of the city. They will show you things that expats have no idea about. First, I think this will really enrich your experience. And second, it will make you kind of appreciate the city on a whole different level. So I really, really recommend that. Although on a side note, it won't necessarily be easy. The Swiss people are very friendly, but there is a certain distance. So, you know, it's easy to make small talk, but to be let into the, let's say, more inner circle, that's not that easy. So there might be some struggles there, but I think it's well worth it. And I feel very grateful that I was able to meet and befriend some locals because they were just so nice and welcoming to me. So thank you very much for that, if you're watching. And actually I thought I would give one more as a bonus, number 11. Having a car in Switzerland, uh, where do I start? It's just so, so, so expensive. If you don't really, really need it, like maybe you live in a village that is outside of the city, if you really don't need it, I would suggest not to get one because the taxes for the cars are ridiculously high. The maintenance, of course, is gonna be expensive. Insurances are also not gonna be cheap, not to mention parking. Parking on the streets is maybe not that expensive, but it's, the car is gonna be very badly scratched in most cases in many neighborhoods. So if you want the car to be, you know, safer you will need a garage and that's also super expensive so car becomes a little bit of a luxury if you don't need it on a daily basis if you work and live in the city center you can commute by public transportation really do that and use mobility for anything else uh, i don't know if you're coming from the states you know everybody has like three four five cars per household and in eastern europe also i, I mean obviously every boy at 18 wants to have their own car so this is kind of a standard here I don't think it's actually that necessary and if you make the calculation it barely ever makes sense especially that mobility offers really great services so I would recommend that to anybody and this will wrap it up the 10 things I wish I knew before I came to Geneva and a bonus one I hope you really enjoyed this video if you did please click the subscribe button I would really love to stay in touch see you in the next one ciao